The opposition leader welcomed the growth in the economy, but said his party had serious concerns about the way the government was managing the finances, including, he claimed, the opaqueness surrounding the Gibraltar Savings Bank and Credit Company Limited, and the legacy of debt and spiralling expenditure it would leave future generations of Gibraltarians. Daniel Feetham said the big lie that Gibraltar's public finances were in a ruinous state, that public debt was too high and that borrowing limits had been exceeded had caught up with the government, as had the big lie concerning electoral promises which were undeliverable in the way the chief minister had said they were going to be delivered. The levels of expenditure, he said, were simply not sustainable and someone in the future would be left to clean up the mess. Mr Speaker, recurrent expenditure for next year is expected to rise by 32% from the position it was in March 2012 to 108.95 million per year, an increase of nine million pounds per month. According to the opposition, there's a complete lack of control over public finances. Mr Feetham claimed the government is spending money as if there were no tomorrow, with 24 out of 41 government departments exceeding their budget. He focused on number six common place, where he claimed actual spending was more than five million over estimated expenditure. A total increase of over 100% since March 2012. The chief minister, he said, couldn't even control spending in his own department. The expansion of staffing levels at number six, he claimed, was more than the planned increase for the entire GHA. Legal fees have increased by over 200% in two years and the bill for media monitoring is almost half a million pounds. Travel and entertainment expenses were 287% over budget. And none of this, he added, takes into account the £4.5 million upgrade the Jaguar, Tesla and four Mercs. Mr Speaker, it's a question of priorities. What benefit is there to the ordinary man in the street by this extravagant spending and overspending on number six commonplace. On recurrent revenue, the opposition leader said he was worried that recurrent expenditure would continue to outstrip revenue, most of which, he said, was attributable to import duty. He reiterated the opposition's view that Gibraltar's public finances could not be hermetically sealed from outside influences. This was why, he said, relations with Spain had to be conducted in a calm manner adding he did not think a decrease in certain revenue streams was a coincidence. The opposition leader then went on to public debt, saying it was the highest net public debt figure in Gibraltar's history. Even if you analyse it in gross public debt terms, which is their preferred method and was their preferred method at the last election, I remind the Chief Minister that last year he said that he was well on course to meet his manifesto commitment of reducing gross public debt to £260 million. Well, the outturn is £450 million, an increase, Mr Speaker, of £74.3 million in gross public debt. But he added the figures do not provide the House with an accurate picture and described the lack of information on how and what Credit Finance Company Limited was spending £400 million from the Gibraltar Savings Bank as the single most important assault on the democratic and parliamentary process since he's been in politics. Had the government spent the money itself, he argued, it may not have made a profit this year. This, he said, was creative accounting. Conversely, if the government had borrowed the money Credit Finance Company Limited has paid out, there is no doubt that the net and gross public debt of this community would have increased by £70 million. And on economic growth, he said that no doubt there would be further growth next year, driven by government projects, but warned against growth based largely on projects funded by borrowing, which at some stage had to be repaid. Daniel Feetham said there had been no economic miracle and that the government had taken Gibraltar from financial ruin to the land of milk and honey in 12 months was simply not credible.